So it's two weeks ago already that uh, Father Brian introduced me as the new associate pastor, and I uh, mentioned that I was here back in, the, in September 2010 through um, July 2011. Since then, the, the eight years I've been in Ottawa, two different uh, parishes, and it was nice to come back and see some uh, familiar faces, and as well, there's, there's new faces, which is great. I just, I just hope they're all friendly faces. That's, the, that's what I'm hoping for. And so I, I, it's great to see familiar faces, but I have to confess, names aren't coming back so readily. And so I was thrilled to see that we have Name Tag Sunday. And I have an improvement for Name Tag Sunday. And I want to share it with you. So this is my idea. And you know, I think it would be great, right? We could see each other's names and we could get, you know, those little clip things that the dentist has for the bib, you know? <laughs> you know, because when you think of dentist, right, that just brings up friendly, warm, fuzzy feelings, right? So it would help us with our whole meet and greet kind of thing. But also, for those of us who have a difficult name to pronounce, there would be a, a drop-down uh, option. So, so I, I realize my name is difficult to pronounce because it's, it's French and the S is silent, so it's pronounced uh, Eve. So it's, it's a little disconcerting for me when you, when you pronounce it Eves because I'm thinking, are they seeing more than one of me? Like, <laughs> and if so, what have they been doing for the last hour or more, right? Like, What's, what's been going on that they, they're seeing double and all that kind of stuff? So anyways, the other advantage I thought was that, you know, during the homily I could point out and say, hey, Joe, are you paying attention right now? Because I, I could recognize the names. So anyways, I, I just thought of this recently, so I was waiting for the opportune time to bounce this off Father Brian. Um, I don't know if this is the opportune time, but what do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. yeah, okay. That means we'll talk about it, right? So. so during the last two weeks, two Sundays, we've been hearing about being a disciple. A disciple is someone who has given their yes to following Jesus, right? His invitation, follow me. And it's a, a, a intentional very deliberate choice to say, Jesus, yes, I will follow you. Jesus, I'm all in to being your disciple. Last week, we heard about being on mission. Jesus sent out the 70 ahead of him to proclaim the kingdom. So being a disciple is to be on a mission, on mission for Jesus, but with Jesus. Jesus is always with us on mission. So therefore, mission isn't burdensome. The mission is a mission of love. And so today I want to speak about being a disciple as one who is trying, who's being deliberate in becoming like Jesus, becoming like Jesus. And I want to use the three commandments found in our gospel to love God, love neighbor, and be merciful. The gospel scene begins with a lawyer. Now, not the kind of lawyer that we know, but he was a scholar of the, the law, of Moses, so a scripture a scholar. And so he's asking Jesus a question to test him, and it was the question of the day, the question that rabbis spent time and energy on. And it's still our question for us right here and now today. It is the question, what must I, what must I do to inherit eternal life? You know, what must I do to be with you for eternity in heaven, Jesus? And so Jesus doesn't answer the question, right? He asks a question, he points the lawyer back to the law of Moses and the scriptures, and the, the scholar comes up with the right answer from the scriptures. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. 
So in other words, to love God with every aspect of our being, to love God with the fullness of who we are, and then love your neighbor as yourself. So, but the lawyer goes on to ask a second question, who is my neighbor? And it's, it's a legitimate question because some rabbis interpreted that differently. Some had a narrow interpretation that it was only your kin and others that it extended beyond. And so, of course, again, Jesus doesn't answer the question. He tells a parable. And something to, to note in the parable is that all three passerbys had a similar experience. All three of them, we, we heard, saw the wounded man. Right? The priest and the Levite, a Levite was someone who assisted the priest in the temple. When they saw the wounded man pass by on the other side. So now whatever their reasoning for that was, they failed to love their neighbor as themselves. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. Uh, other translations have compassion. He was moved with compassion. And then the Samaritan goes on to care for the man, really bending over backward, doing everything he can to care for this wounded uh, stranger, including pouring oil and wine on his wounds. Now, uh, Scott Hahn, uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with him, a, f a Catholic scholar, summarizes in one sentence how the Samaritan is an image of Jesus. He wrote, like the Samaritan, Jesus pays the price for us, heals the wound of sin, pours out on us oil and wine of the sacraments, entrusts us to the care of his church until he comes back for us. And so we see in the, the person the, uh, of the Samaritan an image of Jesus, the, the boundless mercy of Jesus. And after his parable, Jesus asks the lawyer who was a neighbor to the man the one who showed him mercy, the one who had compassion, the one who was being like Jesus. Now, often we refer to someone who was helpful as a good Samaritan, especially if they've gone out of their way to help us, right? So you have a flat tire alongside the road and somebody pulls over and they spend, you know, 15, 20 minutes, half an hour helping you, you would say, that was a good Samaritan, and that's true, but there's more to it. There's more bite in Jesus' parable because the Samaritans and the Jews despised each other. They didn't want to have anything to do with one another. There was history in, in, in their peoples. There was bad blood. And there was, you know, they didn't even want to talk to one another, probably didn't even look at one another. And so to do what he did, the Samaritan had to overcome a lot, a lot of bitterness and uh, vengeance and all kinds of things. He had to forgive, you know, let it go and uh, extend care to this man with, with whom he, he would have grown up with a lot of animosity toward his people. And so uh, earlier this week, I was trying to think of an example that we could relate to about animosity, right? And the only thing that came to mind was the Toronto Maple Leafs, you know? And uh, I, then I thought, well, that would probably work in Ottawa, but uh, I'm not sure out here. It might it'd be a mixed bag, right? So then I got an email promoting the movie um, Unplanned. I thought, okay, here, this is an issue with a lot of animosity, and probably many of us have experienced it. If you're not familiar with the movie Unplanned, it's a pro-life movie about Abby Johnson. Abby was a, a director of a clinic of Planned Parenthood for several years down in Texas. She even won Employee of the Year. She was very committed to the cause, all that. But she resigned after watching an abortion on ultrasound, 
and now she is an outspoken pro-life advocate. I was, I, I was fortunate to see the, the screening of the movie in Ottawa in early May, and Abby was there with us. Uh, she had come to speak at the March for Life, so she was there, and after the movie, she answered questions, she shared the rest of the story beyond the movie, which I'll share with you some other time. It's, it's fascinating. But anyways, I highly recommend you go see this movie. Um, I've heard from parishioners, they've gone and really were moved by it and learned a lot. And uh, it's a great thing to, some are going back and they're inviting friends and, and that kind of thing. So highly encourage that. It's not recommended for children. Um, it started on, on Friday night and someone told me they went Friday at 5.15 or whatever it was. And the, and the theater was almost full, which shocked me because we, we were surprised they even agreed to show it at all. And so it runs till Thursday, July uh, 18th. So again, highly encourage you to go see it and, and bring friends with you. And as you'll see in the movie, uh, after Abby left the Planned Parenthood clinic, she faced uh, animosity. Uh, she, there was a lot of vengeance directed toward her from her former boss and senior management. They uh, became her enemy. In fact, they, they were literally out to destroy her, right? Lawsuits, smear campaigns, turning some of her uh, former colleagues and friends against her. They were out to destroy her. And so being a disciple of Jesus, Abby had to forgive, right? She had to extend forgiveness. She, uh, had to, she prays for them, right? So she, in that sense, is trying to extend care and compassion for them and to remain open to them. Now, as she told us uh, after the movie that she was concerned not to uh, exaggerate uh, the situation that she had experienced. And so she asked other former employees of Planned Parenthood to preview the movie before it was released to make sure that it was accurate. And she said they all came back and said, oh yeah, that was my boss, exactly, right? All that kind of stuff. So she didn't want to villainize um, the, the people involved. And so, again, just, just to clarify, as a disciple, Abby has every right, in fact, she has a duty to speak out uh, against Planned Parenthood's ideology. And she is very outspoken, she's very direct, very blunt, right? She is from Texas, so, you know, all that, which is good, but if she wants to be a good Samaritan, she has to have care and compassion for the people that are her enemies. Right? That she has to uh, overcome the animosity and be merciful. So for us too, as we want to be disciples of Jesus, a disciple becoming like Jesus. So, and if we want to be a good Samaritan, we need to live mercifully. Right? And so as a disciple, as a good Samaritan, we want to follow those commandments of love God above all things, our neighbor as ourselves, and to be merciful.